We made a, a sled system for pulling the car apart and putting it back together, kind of a trolley system. But we put the Porsche on the sled, welded it to it, onto the dolly system, which was on track. Cut the car in half, moved it apart, cut the section out. We took, I think, a 12 inch section out of it. When we're done, we ground the edges smooth, we pushed the car back together again. Everything had to be cut right down the center and then put right back in place again. And one of the most challenging parts was the electronics in the car. They have a, a computer that come in and test the electronics to find out if there's any faults in the wiring. And we must have cut a thousand wires. They came in and put the tester on and said, there's going to be a lot of faults here. We'll have to correct them as we go. They didn't find one fault. Everything. all the vital fluids? Yeah. So this is going to work. No. <laughs> All right, let's pull it together. When we took 12 inches out of the car, pulled the car back together again, the door was so narrow you could hardly get into the car and it didn't look right. So we wound up cutting the door and lengthening the door after shortening it and then moving the door jam back um, a certain amount. And again, that, that's uh, what was funny between animators and customizers was the animators would hold a little model car up and stand back and look at it to see where the door should be. We took a tape measure out and measured it. So we're going by inches and fractions of an inch or thousands of an inch sometimes. And they were going by, well, I think this looks better if you move this a little this way or move this up or do this or do that. And um, it was a, a different approach to it. One of the things we look forward to when we do a project like this are the perks. And uh, one of the perks was uh, the use of a Porsche that came about when, uh, when Howard Buck from, from Porsche Studio Services uh, agreed to give Eddie um, a 2000, I guess a 2005 uh, uh, test car to drive uh, while we were doing this project. And, and he looked right at home behind the wheel of that car. Rumor is Pixar and the guys are coming down soon. Um, that's going to be for a later date to see, but overall early construction is going fairly, fairly well. That's this is the same thing. This is 200. This is, this is double the size. That's two. That's two. It's just twice what that is. One feet. So, so this and a half box. instead of this double. Yeah. 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 You know, I would just do one at 130. Let's try 130. Because I think when you get two of those together, that, that's, that's going to be baby eyes. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm taking my eyeball back. One of the things that makes this project unique uh, is the fact that we had to tool up to do a lot of the processes. Uh, tooling up means uh, we had to get some new equipment, which is uh, a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing because we like to get new stuff, and a bad thing because we're on such a tight deadline and we have to learn how to use the stuff. Um, in this case, it was uh, 3D digitizing, 3D routing, uh, all of that to make the animated front ends on the cars. Um, it took a while to work the bugs out of the new machines, um, but they're working fine now. Uh, the parts are coming out good, and uh, things are pretty much back on schedule. Well, here I am at one of my favorite machines. This is our router that we got. Uh, this thing, we could take a drawing of anything, like we did the Pixar cars, put it inside the computer, the computer takes it, turns it into code that the machine reads, sends it over to this little machine, and this machine uh, routes a piece of wood out in whatever shape that we put in the drawing. So we could take a fender of a car, a hood of a car, we could do an, a giant eyeball if we wanted to, stick it in here and make it out of wood. This is something we used to do with chainsaws and, and grinders years ago. So this is going to save us a ton of time. This is, like I say, my most favorite machine. So after we get it out of the router, we bring the block of wood over and put it on this table here, and then by adjusting these controls and pushing the right buttons, uh, we can put down a piece of plastic on top of this and, and suck all the air out between the part and the plastic, and we can form a piece of, piece of anything, a piece of a fender, a hood. We can do it in minutes. This is my second most favorite machine in the world. The schedule of the cars, um, 
we're well aware of the uh, tight deadline, and that's all we do here is, is make these tight deadlines. Um, we got off to a really good start on the Porsche. Uh, the, uh, the cutting and, and welding up of the, of the body went flawlessly. Uh, but then it seemed to kind of hit some rough spots. Uh, it took a long time for the initial molding in of the body to, to take place, uh, which set me back on my paint job uh, by about a week. I had to spend about a week uh, redoing some body work on it. And um, I'm never too happy about that, but uh, I get over it. We had to um, build a mouth on the front. That became a little tricky because we, working with a metal car, it was a rubber bumper, so we made the front bumper out of fiberglass, and it was a one-off, so we had to sculpt it out of foam. We took spray foam, shaped it with cheese graters, and um, sanded it down, put a layer of fiberglass over it, and we're getting ready to make a mold so we could make multiples, and then they pushed the deadline up on us. So we wound up making the only bumper for Sally is on Sally. There's no mold, that's, that's the only one. If we ever had to build a second one, we'll have to start all over again from scratch. 